Alright guys, it's time to uh, flip this camper cabin over onto the other trailer. Um, I think I got an idea on how to uh, do this. I'm going to try to do it by myself. I'm going to jack it up. Then I'm going to put these uh, 4x4s underneath. Try to lift it up on a couple of saw horses. Um, I'll do that in the front and back. And um, I'm going to pull that old trailer frame out from underneath it and pull the other one under it and then lower it down we'll see if that works let's get to it I have a large tree stump that's about 20 inches high slid um, underneath the back end of the camper and then I have a small piece of plywood um, between the stump and the jack and then a section of uh, 2 by 10 between the jack and the bottom of the camper and the idea here is to uh, place that between the uh, frame members and be able to apply uh, pressure in a large area and just enough to lift the camper up about you know five or six inches so I can slide uh, those two those four by fours um, between the cabin and the frame um, so I figured I'd get to that point and then uh, take it from there. I was able to get the camper jacked up enough to slide the 4x4 um, beneath uh, the cabin and above the frame. And then I've got uh, my sawhorse in place. Um, so now I need to move the jack over and then I'll jack up that end of the 4x4 four four and then slide the uh, sawhorse underneath. Um, this is a Stanley sawhorse. It's rated for 500 pounds. Um, so I'm hoping that's going to be uh, enough to support one corner of the uh, camper cabin. So let's see how we do. Okay, I got that jacked up high enough um, so that I could slide the sawhorse underneath that end of the 4x4. Four four. Um, so now I just need to lower that end down and then uh, repeat that process on the other side, get the whole back end uh, lifted up. Um, maybe this camper is heavier than I thought it was. Or maybe the sawhorse isn't really rated for 500 pounds. Or maybe the rating was not for the center of the sawhorse, but for the edge of the sawhorse where it has the legs supporting it. Um, either way, uh, this was a fail, and uh, I had to stop and reassess what I was going to do next. I ran to uh, the local hardware store and picked up a couple of these channel lock heavy duty saw horses and uh, these seem to uh, be able to hold up the weight. Um, they're rated for 1300 pounds versus 500. Um, so uh, I was able to get uh, this side done. Now I just need to move over and uh, get the other side jacked up as well. I was able to get um, both sides jacked up and under the heavy duty saw horses. Um, so that was all good. When I moved to the front of the camper uh, and I tried to jack that up, um, it wouldn't break free from the frame. So I had to stop and try to figure out what was holding the, the camper to the frame. And turns out that I had a couple of um, bolts that were inside um, some square pipe that I didn't see. And I couldn't see it from beneath and I couldn't see it from inside the cabin either because um, it was inside the wall. So by the time I figured that out, uh, the camper had been up in the air for so long that one of the 4x4s was starting to um, split and crack. Um, so I had to uh, jack everything back up remove that 4x4, lower it back down, and essentially start back from the beginning. I 
if you look at that uh, top 4x4, four four, you can see that there's a knot that goes all the way through the 4x4, four four, and it's right on the edge, creating a weak spot. And that's where it was starting to split. So um, after I pulled those out, um, I figured I was going to have to run to the hardware store and pick up a couple more beams. So I uh, closed it up for the day and figured I'd um, get back on it on the weekend. I had to remove the bottom panel um, on the front end of the wall in order to see where those bolts were located. And uh, sure enough, um, here's where uh, the first bolt was located. And here's where the second bolt was located. Um, so I was able to um, use a deep socket ratchet and uh, get both of those um, bolts removed. And that was the last thing holding the cabin to the frame. So I picked up a couple of 4x6 four beams to replace those 4x4s. Four and uh, they were plenty strong enough to hold up the weight of the cabin. Um, so I went through that whole process again. I got to this point at the front of the uh, camper and I was able to lift it up since I had those two bolts removed um, and then place it on these saw horses. And you can see here that I doubled up uh, these lower weight saw horses and used a two by four, you know, across both of that way it would distribute the weight, you know, on the edge where there's more support with the legs. And that solution seemed to work out fine. Here the, the cabin of the camper is completely separated from the frame and it's lifted up and being supported by the sawhorses. So uh, I, at this point, I ought to be able to um, just pull the frame out from underneath the cabin. All right, guys, sometimes you got to work smarter, not harder. Should be able to pull this guy out from under. I'd like to give a shout out to my father-in-law, Paul Walter, who came up with this idea. Um, pretty genius idea, actually. Um, it allowed one guy to be able to lift a thousand pound camper off of a trailer. Had a couple of hitches, but uh, once I got those out of the way, uh, it went pretty smooth. Um, so that's all that I've got for this week. So stay tuned uh, for next week's video where I... Uh, attempt to lower this down onto the new trailer. We'll see how I do. Talk to you later. Thanks for watching.